The member for Murray. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, fellow members of the 37th Parliament of Western Australia. It is indeed a great honour to stand in this place and speak on behalf of the constituents of the Murray electorate. In doing so, I will endeavour to carry on the great tradition of our forebearers and exalt the great work that they accomplished in bringing greatness to the state of Western Australia. I speak specifically of the involvement of early pioneers of the Murray district and the influence they have perpetuated in opening up vast parts of the state to pastoral leases and my unwitting and coincidental journey that lead me to this point in time and place that has given me an insight to the importance of the work I feel I must now continue. Thomas Peel arrived in the Swan River Colony on the 15th of December 19, sorry, 1829, six weeks too late to be eligible for his priority grant of the Swan and Canning Rivers, coincidentally an area which would have included the areas of South Perth where I was to be born 131 years later. Instead, Peel secured 250,000 acres of land based on a ratio of 40 acres per pound invested, which is now known as the Peel region. He bought the land sight unseen and moved 400 settlers uh, from England to the region on board the Rockingham via Clarence, which is now Woodman Point. In 1930, a settlement was established at Peel Town, including the barracks at Soldiers Cove, which now forms the centre of Mandra. In 1934, the town of Pinjarra was founded and it became pivotal to the opening up of hinterland to the east of the Darling Ranges and an important link to the settlements opening to the south at Leshnol and at Bass. Later, many of the pastors from the Murray districts were responsible for opening up cattle stations in the Gascoigne, Pilbara and Kimberley district, some of whom are still have a connection today. An area I'm familiar with, having cherished memories of my 12 years service as a police officer. Today, many of the streets and the roads of the Peel region bear the names of those early pioneering families, and certainly their lineage still remains an important and respected members of the community. A number of books exist about the trials and tribulations that these pioneering families endured during those turbulent years, but one common thread that's still evident today is the dogged determination and sense of community that still exists. The acquaintance of the Murray district to this house was first engaged when Major Frederick Charles Irwin, who was, the go who was with Governor Stirling and others, uh, and others, were the members of the first legislative council and, are depict and is depicted in the famous painting that adorns the entry statement of this building. Major Frederick Irwin was accredited to establishing the first garrison in the Murray district and is now commemorated by bearing the name of the largest school in the Peel region, of which Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker and members, we have been fortunate to have been visited today by 84 students of the year nine of the Frederick Irwin School of uh, Mandra. Again, coincidentally, inclusive in this visitation, my eldest daughter and many young people known to me whom are lineal descendants of the people I speak of today. Thomas Peel, by vesture of owning so much land, was the next appointed to the Legislative Council, and after a strained relationship with a fellow magistrate with whom he challenged to a duel, later resigned. Peel was replaced in the Legislative Council by a Francis Corbett Singleton in 1844, a naval officer who had earlier purchased land from Peel for two and six and settled an area around the Dandalup and Murray River. Interestingly enough, Singleton was a fellow magistrate that Peel had earlier challenged to a duel. And Mr. Madam Speaker and members from all sides of the House be reminded and reassured that factional fighting is nothing new to politics in this state, if not a little bit more subdued than in Peel's time. Unfortunately, the same year, whilst on the way to Perth to attend the Legislative Council, Singleton's residence was situated on the Murray River was totally destroyed by fire, valued at £1,200, and as a direct result gave rise to the Mutual Insurance Company, which was established to protect all colonists from disasters of this kind. This institution was the forerunner for what is now known to us as the State Government Insurance Office, or SGIO. Singleton's three years work in the Legislative Council was a credit to later reforming the Land Act of 1850. And it was interesting to members to note that the issue of property rights for landowners in the Murray District remains a very strong issue today as it was 150 years ago. 
an uninterrupted succession of representatives to the Legislative Council occurred, which included the names of S. R. Hammersley, S. Burt, Captain T. Fawcett, Hobart Tucky, and up until 1890, when the establishment of the Legislative Assembly saw William Patterson become the first member for Murray. Patterson later resigned from Parliament in his second term to become the head of the Agricultural Bank and later selling of a portion of Patterson's land holding to Kingsley Fairbridge, who in 1920 relocated his farm for orphan children to the current site that, it, that exists today. Mr Speaker and Madam Speaker and Members, I am proud to say that I am associated with the Fairbridge organisation that continues to provide a home for young people in need. It will be my intention as the local member to foster support for a new fundraising foundation recently launched by the Governor of Western Australia, Lieutenant General John Sanderson, in the name of another great West Australian and will be known as the Sir Charles Court Foundation. Members, before I end this truncated history lesson, I think it also important to mention the contribution of the McLarty family to the Murray Districts and my position as it is here today. Edward McLarty MLC served for 22 years and was regarded as the most outstanding member of that generation. He was a dominating and strong-willed man who on occasions made his opponents quail under his verbal broadsides. It was once reported he hit a member over the head with a book when that gentleman would desist from speaking when so ordered. He later took the entire group of members to a hotel and purchased drinks for all and offered to the public at a cheque for £1,000 and asked if he would take the cost of the refreshments from it. Perplexed for a moment, the publican returned a short time later and presented the member with a cheque for the change. On another occasion, Edward McClarty was fined 17 and 10 for being causing to be laid in a public street. I think that means being drunk in a public place in today's palance. Surprisingly, the fact that Surprisingly, the fact appeared to escape the local editorials of the day, but I suppose police stations in those days did not have computers that were freely accessible. Edward McClarty built his historic home in Edenvale, in the heart of Pinjarra, and raised a brood of seven, including the youngest son, Ross McClarty, who later became Sir Ross McClarty, Murray MLA, and the Premier of Western Australia. The McClarty name, like many of those other early pioneers, still resonate and without the support of these families, I would not be here today. Four years ago, had anyone suggested to me that I would be standing here today, I would have told them they were crazy. It was, I was in charge of a country police station, involved in countless community groups, running a successful family business, finishing off some university units, and busily raising my three children with my wife Kathleen. But a series of events occurred which were the catalyst for me to reconsidering my position. As mentioned, I was been, I've always been involved in many community groups, including Roadwise, Safer WA, Marine Rescue, SES, Fire Brigade, Lions, Rot I'm a Rotarian, and on numerous residence committees. A common thread with all these groups was that inevitably we were competing against all the other organisations out there for funding of, for the betterment of our community. Bureaucracy and red tape always seem to be, keep our long-term objectives just out of reach. This often occurred in the face of apparent and blatant waste of taxpayers' dollars, which I've witnessed from one end of this state to another. For those who were interested, I joined the police force in 1978, served three years in Perth before the next 24 years serving as a country police officer in Broome, Fitzroy Crossing, Halls Creek, Dampier, Denmark and Australind. I've watched helplessly people, I have helplessly watched people drown. I've removed more dead people from car crashes than I care to remember. I've held the heads of trapped and dying people struggling to breathe. Held, attended more domestic violence than football matches. Hunted serial murders. Risked my life searching for missing stockmen Amos and Anitz in the Great Sandy Desert. Attended coronial inquests and royal commission hearings. Been accused by star-struck lawyers pursuing a seat on the bench of murder. I've been stabbed five times. Stood nose to nose at picket union picket lines, plucked environmentalists out of trees, assaulted more times than I can remember, unsex unsuccessfully conducted CPR on a fellow police officer after he was deliberately run down and killed, and I'm still standing and going strong. It has been said, 
what, does, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and I subscribe to that view. The actual moment that swayed me to embark on this path, I must accredit to a former police colleague and now the member for Yokine's response to a correspondence about a health system in the Peel region. The correspondence pertained to an eight hour wait in emergency I had with my then six year old son who had broken an arm on, New Year's, on Christmas Eve. Dismayed, I remarked, someone needs to do something about this. And then I realised I was someone. <laughs> member, members of the state of health Education, law and order, transport issues in regional Western Australia are a disgrace. Services taken for granted in metropolitan areas are often hours away from country residences. A former police colleague in charge of a country police station was also happened to be in the town, the ambulance driver, because of his, of his position in the town, had on an occasion to drive his gravely ill child to a regional hospital several hours away only to have his child die in the mother's arms en route. I find it paradoxical then that the first bill before the 37th Parliament is one that intends to further diminish the proper and just representation of regional Western Australia. I find it absurd and abhorrent in the light of the example I've just given, given you and countless others that are of untold stories that metrocentric opportunistic parliamentarians care to embark on this path. It begs the question for mine about the mindset of those sitting in the opposite side of the chamber who allegedly are representing the best interests of country electorates. I pause to think of my Aboriginal friends in the remote part of the Kimberley and the great Sandy Desert. Issues that can only be addressed by representation at a grassroots state level of government. The issues of STD, solvent abuse, health and education. Imagine the feeling of abandonment they will feel and I wonder what Ernie Bridge would say to the level of representation to his Jaru, Walpri, Gugacha and Pintipi people, who, you, who he used to represent and represent well. Mr. S Madam Speaker, the towns built in the Pilbara during the resource boom of the 60s, 70s and 80s are in need of renewal and changing in demographic. I wonder whether our friends in Dampier and Karratha and beyond will be receptive to proposed legislation, this proposed legislation. The issue goes to the heart of our great democracy. Our forefathers introduced the weighted voting system to allow proper and just representation of regional Western Australia, an area I need not remind members in res is responsible for the vast majority of this state's wealth and the country's wealth. It, ex it exists because of wise members of this House who went before us, recognised its importance. Listening to the proponents of this legislation, one could be led to believe that hospitals, schools and police stations are bristling on every street corner of the vast network of well-made roads in our regional areas. This is certainly not the case in reality, and like many folk, country folk, are deeply concerned about the degradation of society in regional Western Australia. This issue for mine is about protecting our greatest asset, the diversity of our individuals, their ability to express their views and not be relegated to a voice in the great expanse of this state. If you have not done so, take a back road and talk to some of the people who are the salt of the earth. Walk a mile in other man's shoes, in other words. Lifeline is another organisation I fully support. They are in the business of saving lives of Western Australians afflicted with the insidious illness of suicide, an affliction I care to remind members is endemic and approaching epidemic proportions in regional areas. My colleague here, the member for Rowe, has the unenviable title of coming from the suicide capital of Western Australia based on a per capita basis. As a police officer, I'm acutely aware of the problem and I take this moment to pause to remember the families left to carry on, some of whom are dear and close friends of mine. Help for one of the five in people suffering from varying degree of mental illness needs serious redress by, this gov by the government. The Murray electorate as it stands today comprises of an interesting cross-section of life as it is in Western Australia. It is unique in as much as it comprises of urban living in the west coastal parts of the Mandrake City, semi-rural acreage blocks where horse ownership is very high, agriculture in the form of beef cattle production, a number of small country towns and a large provincial town that acts as a service point for the agricultural business in Pinjarra. Throw into the mix the world's largest alumina production plant at Pinjarra and a timber milling tourist town of Dwelling Up, 
and I think we have a we have a, we cover a pretty wide range of diverse people and lifestyles. It makes for an interesting challenge to represent as a local member, but given my background as a country cop in rural WA, I believe I've been conditioned to and have been unwittingly trained to take on this important job. The issues of particular concern to the electorate are the health of the Peel waterways, the nutrient runoff, acid sulphate soils, the erosion of bank scores by speeding boats. I support the call by the member for manager to establish a base in the Peel region for water police. The Peel region has in excess of 9,000 registered boats and many more in the area during peak holiday times. I further call on the statutory body similar to the Swan River Trust to be established in the Peel region to take ownership of the problems affecting one of the state's majestic waterways. The infill sewerage program needs to be urgently reviewed before the common summer occurrence, summer occurrence of algal blooms, particularly in the Serpentine and the Murray Rivers, gets worse. Transport. The extension of the Quinana Freeway on the Peel Deviation, as it is known, is the singular most important piece of infrastructure need for the prosperity of this state. The government's commitment to this project is most welcome, but I believe we can, work, we can and should commence sooner. In my new role as Shadow Spokesperson for Road Safety, a number of safety issues with the project need urgent attention in order to avert road deaths. Further, the Southern Rail Link, which was first postponed in this House during the Court Government, will be a vital to the people of the Murray electorate. More work needs to be done locally in connecting bus links in the provincial areas of the Peel region and the long-term strategic planning of, to cater for expected population growth uh, of the area. I move on to youth unemployment. We're not doing enough to provide real jobs for our young people in the Peel region. This is evident in the demographic of young people aged between 17 and 25 in the region leaving to the area seeking education and jobs of substance. Urgent upskilling, particularly in the building industry, is needed. 60% of all building in the state occurs south of the river. A change in convention from years gone by when the jobs and the commensurate TAFE colleges were sprouting in the north. I declare a vested interest that of, and that of my constituents of this issue. The demographic of young people between 0 and 15 in the electorate, particularly those coming from overseas to this great state, is enormous and forward planning is urgently required to address the jobs prospects issue. My children and, the, the, and my constituents' children need meaningful, long-term jobs. Industrial land. The Murray electorate is strategically positioned between the ports of Fremantle and the soon to be redeveloped port, Bunbury Port, offering a unique opportunity for export and import businesses to thrive. Industrial land is available in the Murray electorate that needs to be opened up. The rail link is proximic and access to cheap power under a construction of the new Alinta co-generation plant at Pinjarra is also there. A delegation of Murray businessmen depart for China next week to attend a series of trade shows in Delian in China and, else, and, and other parts of China. We need to get on board and take full advantage of the opportunities that present not only in China but in India, Vietnam and other Asian countries. Tourism. Tourism is the largest single employer of people in Australia. The, people, the Peel region has for, for, for too long been overlooked as a tourist destination. The House already knows my position on protecting the Peel waterways. This is because it's probably our greatest asset. Add to the mix the wonderment and the mystique of the Hoffman Valley Rail that chugs its way from the historic town of Pinjarra to the picturesque town in Dwelling Up. And what a great place to market from a tourism perspective. Law and order. Members, this area is my bread and butter. I've researched and written papers on the topic and it's been much of my life for, the, for, for many years. The challenge to all in this House is to come into terms with the changing environment of contemporary modern day policing. The, the days of strategic quick shift with a size 13 have gone, but what does remain is the importance of family and the responsibility of parent to ensure the, the issue understand what the acceptable levels of behaviour is in our community. It's not the role of police or the schools or for that matter the government to teach our children. It is the role of the parent. Sure, government, police and schools play a very important role in assisting parents, 
but the touchy-feely, well-intended social workers have diminished the important role of parents play and must play. Firm and fair parameters must be set and abided. Consequence for action must become a reality, and the old adage, the penalty must fit the crime, still rings true today. Parents have they been hoodwinked, and provisions of section 257 of the Criminal Code provide for the lawful chastisement under appropriate circumstances. I can hear the howl of so-called experts already, but please do not confuse lawful chastisement with child abuse. I've seen child abuse and it sickens me. Our children need to be loved, cherished, guided and taught, respect for other people and property. This is not the sole dominion of governments, it's the responsible, it's the simple approach of tough love. Age, alcohol, drugs are no, uh, you, sorry, alcohol, age, alcohol and drug use are no excuse for bad behaviour. Empower our police, our teachers, our medical practitioners, for they are the glue that holds our society together. Defend them or defend yourself. It is my firm belief that we are collectively the product of our environment and we have arrived simultaneously at this place, influenced by our respective life's experiences and influences that, that influences our beliefs and our morals. Like a blacksmith forging steel, it comprises of a number of basic alloys that are malleable and strengthened using heat and tempered using cooling. So it goes with the human condition to make a robust individual that can withstand the rigours of this chamber. The basic ingredient I attribute to my being comprises of a number of people. Firstly, my immediate family, my father, Dennis, my mother, Betty, both products of a depression and extreme hardship. They worked several jobs in order to raise five children. My extended family and friends, too numerous to mention, and in danger of missing one, I refrain from listing them all here today. But to them I say thank you. My campaign team, support base and well wishes that charted a way forward through often turbulent seas for the past 18 months, none of which had any previous campaigning experience, which in retrospect became a strength. I also thank an old football coach, Ken Armstrong, for instilling discipline, a work ethic, dogmatic determination and a never say, die, never say die attitude, which builds character. His inspirational words based on the teaching of Vince Lombardi still ring in my ears. He once said, winning isn't everything, but wanting to is. I'd also like to thank my former colleagues of 27 years in the West Australian Police Force the experience gained during those years holds me in good stead for the future, as I too can say that there is nothing of the human condition that I, cannot, that I have not seen. To my parliamentary colleagues, I say unto you, thank you, and I look forward to the next four years of working with you and what I publicly acknowledge to the people of Western Australia, the great honour and responsibility I accept by stepping into this chamber and, and in this place today. Lastly, but certainly not least, my wife Kathleen of 21 years this coming Thursday, and my three children, Kelly, Kimberly and Thomas, who have um, been with me particularly through the critically the last, the last two years. Members of the 37th Parliament of Western Australia, I bid you all good health and sound judgment for the next four years and beyond. Thank you.